Right, let's get into the agenda. It would have been a nervous wait for all around Carlton and particularly for their vice-captain, Jacob Wiedering, as he waited on the verdicts of the MRO after his grapple with Toby Green. It's a bad look and if the roles were reversed, we'd be up in arms. Toby's done it again. There was an incident just before half-time involving uh, yourself and Jacob Wiedering. A, a bit of facial contact. Can you tell us what went on? I don't know, he might be in trouble. I think I got in trouble for that, so we'll see how he goes. For me, looking at that multiple times today, nothing to answer for. Let him go! Jacob! The free kick! I haven't actually had a look at it, haven't even bothered to have a look at it. Um, I'm sort of comfortable with the commentary um, around it, so I'll leave it at that. I can't see him missing a week for that. I know when it's a still shot and you can see the hand in the face, it looks really bad, but when you see it in context, I think it's for a fleeting moment that he gets his hand in the wrong spot. He moves it pretty quick. I'm OK with a fine. This is a distraction they don't need. I don't know whether it costs him or not, Joey. I really don't know where I sit on this. I know it doesn't look good, but I'd be staggered if he gets a week for that. It all swung on whether it was graded as intentional or careless. It came back as careless and thus a fine rather than the one-week suspension that would have been associated with intentional. Completely happy with that. I would have been disappointed if he got a week. Now, in, in, a, in a less than a second it found itself there and it got off really, really quickly. It didn't hang around. It wasn't, you know, wasn't a bad smell. He was above him. He's got his, got his mate in the ground. He put his face in his head and took it straight off. I'm happy with the with the fine. He knew yeah. he knew that he had carelessly put his hand yep. where he shouldn't and yep. made amends immediately, which just removed it from if you went back to the previous couple, which were Andrew Brayshaw and Dane Zorko, and they were graded as intentional. And I think if you visually put them up against each other, there is a difference. This is a step below what happened in those other two. And those two players believe that they were not guilty and were affronted by the charge. But yes, as uh, I it's right in the margins, but I do agree, I think. So Toby spoke to Fox after the game. Yeah. And, and he said, well... And this is raw for him, understandably. Yeah, he's just comes... He, he's a competitor, man. He was wound up. He was so wound up on the weekend, Toby Green. And there's no better wound-up player in the comp than Toby Green. He was awesome. So when Sarah got to him, mate, he's just coming out of this competitive cage that he was in, and he was quite right. Hey, they got me for that. Yeah. And I fully expected Toby Green to say that. And he did, so... So 2019, they were consecutive finals. You'll recall he got fined for the elimination final. Yep. And then he put himself back in the same position in the mm. semi and got suspended for it. So he got the fine the first time through as well. And there's that. This is the next angle, apparently, Jared shows... You just... It hung around too long. Yeah. yeah. It hung around on the face... Far too long. So the, the Giants then got... Um, well, it wasn't a nasty surprise because this one was in the margins as well, but Toby Bedford has been suspended for one match for yep. his careless bump on Zach Fisher. It was regarded as medium and high. So here's how it transpired. We know that the Giants are taking this to the tribunal tomorrow night and will they would. He apologised. He knew what happened. I think he did go the... the he, he did the right thing. He went to Shepherd and, and made, uh, allow his teammate to not feel any pressure. In the old days, he used to be called a Shepherd. Now they call it a block. He turned his back and left himself exposed and hit him in the head. I think that wasn't intentional, but... It only has to be careless. I think it is careless. I was interested in it. So I think it is careless. If you watch that a little bit further, and Ed Carlton's medical report will play a role here, is Fisher is grabbing for his throat, throat. which is high, yep. but it's not his head, which I think does mm -hmm. play a role tomorrow night. And I think the medium grading is that's the most fertile ground on which to challenge. OK, where was the contact made from the, from the body? Like, no, we're talking, the we're shoulder. talking shoulder into throat. Um, so that's to be argued tomorrow night. But oh. there's, there's clearly an avenue for the Giants to to have what? the two bites at this. One is that it was completely accidental in, mm. in what was a very natural act that goes awry. Yeah. And the second is medium down to low. Is you'd have, I'd have to see the medical report, and I haven't. Mm. But Fisher uh, plays on mm. unimpeded from Can I put something to you? Yes, it's a tough game. You can intimidate and you can aggressively hit someone. He didn't have to do it. All he had to do was step in front. 
He didn't have to go back. He didn't have to. The shepherd's already on. The she- he's already stopped him. So the argument is, did he go back? Did he have to do it? Now, you're allowed to do it, but you're not allowed to hit someone in the head when you yep. do it. OK? Yep. But if he just sort of shepherded him and cut off the angle a bit further, it wouldn't be an issue. It's high stakes because he was so good. Oh, and the, very good the game player. he missed suspended, they missed him really obviously. That was the, the only sour note for the Giants. What they did was splendid. So the home and away season took us to the very last phase and it was a curious sort of afternoon that drew more teams in all the time. We're obviously really happy to be able to make finals, give ourselves a chance to start the new season, as they call it. It's a strange feeling, this one. (laughs) Um, uh, To lose and still win. It is all important for the Western Bulldogs tonight. They simply must win. And with that, the Dogs live on. Bulldog heads will hit pillows tonight with their team holding a precious place in the eight. And they will wake up the most one-eyed Carlton fans in the country. It's a simple equation for the Giants. Win and they're in. Would have been nice to have already been in, but the Bulldogs played well and got the job done, so over to us. Time for a third. Doggies fans will cheer that. They are all so critical right now. Can they pile on enough goals to restrict the Blues to be able to steal St Kilda's sixth spot? We've all got our calculators out. And this will take them to the verge of having six spot on the AFL ladder, which means a home final. And that means a magnificent goal has been delivered again. And they're now in sixth position. Durden, and it bounces truly. We're going to have to wait. That'll be cheered by Saints fans. Saints fans would love this to go through. And Fisher has given them their wish. splash of orange as part of September. The Giants will be there. Drama right to the end. We're glad we made finals. That was our priority. Whether that was a home or away, I mean, we had the opportunity, but we can't be too greedy. We are able to, uh, in a couple of weeks, play home final, so just can't wait. Very good, guys. Thank you. See you in a <laughs> you always know it's great when there aren't quite enough decimal places on the live ladder that you're looking at. And that Fantastic. was it yesterday, wasn't it? So the Sydney teams traded places is the way that it worked out. And the dogs had a look in and then fell out. Yeah, and Adelaide. Oh, are, so they're, they're, they're our basketball team. They're the moral holders of a place in the eight, but they're watching on as it all Mate, happens. I'm watching. Got, so the Giants are built for finals. I think it's one of the qualities that they've always had. That was a hell of a good win yesterday. That's as win. amped up as I've ever mm. seen Marvel at the start of that game with Carlton fans yeah, there for yeah. Charlie Kurnow. They were able to absorb it, steady up, and then just impose themselves. I think, I think as we speak, we've got the All-Australian team being announced on Wednesday... I think Adam Kings is the coach of the year. They were one three. I think no, then they were three seven. No one cares. No one cared about him. And slowly up there, he gathered the team, gathered the club. Said, right, we're we're, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And slowly and surely, they've built their game, Jared, to the point where defensively they're strong, offensively they're scary. And if you want to play, if you want to play um, the Giants, hey, be prepared to get your knees dirty. Because you're on. It's on from go to woe. Led by, I think it should be all Australian captain as well, Toby Green. They've got a lot of their top-end talent. So Kingsley comes in, grabs their top-end talent. When people think, oh, they won't want to leave, they've seen their best. He's, he's, he's corralled them and got the best out of them. He's found these couple of high-half forwards like Bedford and, and others who are just running up in the ground down with speed. And they've, got a, they've put together a young defence, which... He's getting the accolades. He's getting identified. Yep. And they're standing up in big games. I, I think they've just been... If you barrack for the Giants, and it's a shame they've got a smaller supporting base, the word that comes to mind from the opposition is respect and from fa- Giants fan is pride. Because you don't want your team to roll over. That's the first thing you want. They never roll over, no, this mob. No. They never, ever roll over. And you know, and, you know, no one's scared of Essendon. People are scared of this mob. They're scared. They have it's, great It's a great component to have. So it meant the Bulldogs missed the eight. I could actually make the case that this is much better that they did rather than just enduring yet more torture. They'd tip their hand. We know exactly what the Bulldogs are and now it's for them to go away quietly and sort it out. Yeah, there's... 
how much is to sort out? Now, the dogs have to identify how much and who they have to sort out. Ever, all of us from the outside, we can throw rocks at them and others are throwing boulders at them, OK? I think it's ridiculous to suggest that loop beverage should be sacked. That's the first thing. But change has to be made. Now, I've written a piece to Mara Jared saying the entire football department has to be reviewed. And not just the football department, the environment, OK? And I've suggested they get some outside eyes in. So, Amit Baines, the CEO, does he have to review Chris Grant? Does Chris Grant, the head of football, have to review the football department? It's a bit, it's a bit insular. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay to bring someone in to make your team better and make your club better. It's not a, it's not a crisis. You didn't make the finals, and you've got to find answers. You, you're allowed to have help, Jared. You're allowed to get help in life. There's ads everywhere. If you need help, put your hand up. Put your hand up. Get some experienced footy people and say, just come in and have a chat. Have a chat to why the assistants left. Go further. Why did Lockie Hunter leave? What do you think, Liam Jones? Expectation v reality.